Well, thanks very much, Ravi. Mine is going to be perfectly not five minutes, firstly. <laughs> Secondly, I've got to say, you know, I've got, I've got a very hard to act to follow. I always wanted to go back to grad school, Alexandra, to take a course with you because you're such an engaging teacher. So what can I do? I'm going to give you, you know, a rather boring talk about, you know, the research that I'm involved in. And by the way, I'm going to have to say that most of my students and postdocs are sitting in the back. The fact of the matter is that I'm sit standing up in front of you to take the credit that's not actually for me, it's actually for them. So kudos to my students and my postdocs. So what I'm going to do is to give you a very brief overview of what I'm uh, currently doing in, in, in the lab. Not me, I'm actually becoming more of a liability in the lab. If I go to the lab, most likely I'm going to burn myself or burn someone else or I'm going to break something. So as a result of that, my students have banned me from going into the lab. However, I'm going to use the word I, my, etc. just to represent them. So uh, th there are two main areas of emphasis in my lab. One area is viral immunology, and for those of you who are not, neither virologists nor immunologists, is essentially a combination of the two disciplines, virology and immunology. So if you're interested in understanding how viruses interact with their hosts, and specifically we work with chickens. And there are two major diseases that we're interested in, both of which are produced by viruses, Merrick's disease, which is a herpes virus, um, uh, is caused by herpes virus. It's been around for a number of decades um, in, in uh, various parts of the world. Uh, we've been able to control Merrick's disease virus quite effectively, as a matter of fact, through vaccination, but there is a huge challenge because Merrick's disease virus is evolving, like many other viruses or pathogens that we thought uh, were under control, but eventually we are coming to the conclusion that they are not really necessarily under control and they seem to be evolving as we go along. And obviously something which is also very close and dear to my heart, which is avian influenza virus. Hopefully we are not going to see any more of avian influenza viruses, especially the highly pathogenic ones. But what we are trying to do in my lab is to understand better how avian influenza virus interacts with the host and what we can do in order to generate better immunity against the influenza virus. The second aspect of my uh, work, and again, I'm using my to represent my students, is that we're looking at gut health, and generally speaking, uh, we are interested in understanding how microbiota or commensal microbes in the gut interact with the host. There are a number of things within that area, such as, for example, development of probiotics, and also what we would like to do is to develop perhaps vaccines against some of the pathogens that are of food safety concern, such as Campylobacter jejuni, which resides in the chicken gut without causing any clinical signs or any pathological things in the chicken, but when it's transmitted to humans, it can cause huge problems in humans. So it's not of much interest, I guess, to poultry industry per se, but it is of huge economic importance to human health, public health, based on some accounts that I've seen, this is the most reported food safety pathogen in Canada. It doesn't mean that this is more prevalent than salmonella, it only means that it's more reported, but it's way up there in terms of prevalence in Canada. So just to give you an overview of what I do, what we do, uh, Merrick's disease virus is a virus that causes lymphoma in chickens, and usually the very first time uh, that a student arrives in, in my lab, I usually ask them, do you know what is the first anti-cancer vaccine? And invariably they say it must be against papillomavirus in humans. And in fact, that's not actually true. The first commercial vaccine that came about was actually in regard to uh, Merrick's disease virus. Merrick's disease is very similar in some respect to some of human herpes viruses, like for example, the herpes virus that causes Shigella, or it causes uh, chicken pox in humans uh, in some respects. And also, in some other respects, it resembles some of the viruses that cause lymphoma in humans. So generally speaking, what we would like to do is to understand and dissect out dynamics of immune responses against MDV. One of the main reasons behind it is that MDV, or Merrick's disease virus, is evolving. And one of the reasons behind its evolution is the fact that the vaccines that are currently available are not actually able to uh, completely reduce virus infection. So infection does occur, but what actually happens is that in chickens that are vaccinated, they can control, uh, they can control further replication of the virus inside, but
but they're not actually able to control virus shedding from the feathers. So what we're actually hoping to do in the future is to develop better strategies for control of virus shedding, either controlling infection to begin with, or if infection does occur, we are hoping that we would be able to control shedding of the virus. And more or less, we are doing the same thing with avian influenza virus, and I'm collaborating, I've been collaborating, I believe, since 2008, 2009, give or take, with Dr. Evan Ash, and we've had a very fruitful collaboration looking at avian influenza virus, looking at various different aspects of that from the fundamental immunological point of view and also from the point of view of developing strategies to control avian influenza virus, either through the use of vaccines or through the use of immune stimulants that can do this in a rather short uh, period of time. I think Juan Carlos talked about real virus and what can be done in the context of uh, real virus. We've been doing similar kind of thing in the context of avian influenza virus. And lastly, I'm just going to touch upon a couple of things that are going on in the lab. One of them is development of probiotics. We have, in fact, developed a probiotic formulation, and the probiotic formulation is currently being tested by La Le Monde, looking at the capacity of this particular formulation, which was actually developed by uh, my former postdoc and former student, Jennifer Brisbane, who's going to be giving a short presentation about uh, research directions within SIVA. She developed a probiotic uh, preparation that could uh, almost all completely obliterate salmonella. Probably if you have some further questions you can ask Jen, don't ask me because I know nothing but technical aspects of it. And um, it can also boost immunity to avian influenza. It can also boost immune responses in general. Eva, do I get a... Not yet. Not yet? Okay, that's good. So the, the last thing that I'm just going to touch upon is vaccines against foodborne pathogens, and specifically we are interested in Campylobacter. For some of you who have been in, in this business, you know that Campylobacter is a very hard bacterium to deal with in terms of reducing its burden. So based on some uh, mathematical modeling and so forth, it's been shown that if you can reduce the amount of bacterial burden in poultry populations by about two or three logs, you can reduce that by a few orders of magnitude in human populations. So what we are really hoping to do is not to completely obliterate Campylobacter because probably you know this is going to be a tall order, but we would hope to be able to reduce that to, a, I would say, a couple of orders of magnitude lower than what it already is. And I think most, um, if I'm not mistaken, most or many of our farms are already contaminated with Campylobacter. And as I said, Campylobacter is essentially part of it appears that it's part of commensal uh, composition of the microbiome of chicken gut. So that's why I said it's, it's very difficult to deal with and it's very difficult to reduce um, its burden. So having said that, I'm probably proving myself wrong that I'm not able to keep my time. This is my lab as of, um, I believe it was July of last year, July of 2015. Many of them are actually sitting in the back there and I uh, just wanted to acknowledge their contribution. Thank you very much.